Welcome to Soccer Spective. In this video, we'll take a look at how Toronto FC's first MLS game of the season played out tactically against DC United. The focus will be on TFC, but first we'll see how DC United set up. DC United lined up in a 4-4-2 shape, defended with a mid-block and their game plan allowed TFC to have possession so they could hurt their opponents on the counter. On the ball, DC United expanded to a 4-2-4 shape with their wide midfielders taking advanced positions. DC mostly played direct using the strength of the two strikers to win the first contact. Toronto's 4-3-3 shape also switched to a 4-4-2 off the ball, but Toronto showed more intent to press. Up front, Osorio formed a two-man unit with Adma Diamond Day, which worked together to mark DC's number six canoes and apply pressure on their center backs. Mark Anthony K man marked DC United's other midfielder, Matthias Klisch, and Bradley operated as the free central midfielder, providing cover and support wherever required. Matt Hedges had to man mark Roberta closely as the striker dropped off into link play. Bradley was responsible for providing support to Hedges against Roberta, marking Klitsch when K joined the front line to press, and also to pressure Canoes in situations when the number 6 received the ball away from the front unit. When DC were on the ball, they had a 3v2 advantage in their own half, TFC had a 1-man advantage in the midfield, and there was a 4v4 in and around TFC's own third with DC's wide midfielders and strikers against TFC's back line. On the ball, TFC in a 4-3-3 shape showed versatility and had some good spells of possession. They switched between building up through possession and direct balls in the channels behind DC United's defensive block. Their possession buildup was intended to stretch the opposition on one side before switching and exploiting the space created on the other side. This play in the 28th minute is an example of TFC's possession buildup. Petrata received the ball on the touchline, forcing DC's defensive structure to shift to the right, and he lays it off to Insigne. Petrata, Insigne, and Osorio form a triangle and use it to exchange quick passes under pressure. After exchanging passes, Osorio turns and plays it across the field to Richie Larea. Larea attempts a through ball to Bernadeschi to exploit the space generated on DC's left, but the pass is overhit. When attacking directly, TFC played direct balls in the channels behind DC's relatively high line. Bradley and K played these balls from deep positions for the wingers and the fullbacks. The penalty which led to TFC's first goal was created through a similar play. Bradley initially drops deep to the right back space and plays a long ball in behind in the right channel for Larea. Larea runs in the box with the ball and draws a foul from DC's 16-year-old defender Akin Boni. Another way TFC played the ball in the channels uh, was through their full box. Here is an example of those situations. Here Akinola goes in field and makes a run in the channel. Petretta plays the ball in the channel from the white space. TFC tried these balls multiple times as it suited Akinola's skills to run in behind. With the defensive and pressing structure, TFC was able to stop DC United from creating much with settled possession, but it was their inability to defend transitions that cost them the most. DC scored their first goal and their third goal through transitions. This is how TFC considered the first goal. Trying to make a possession build up on the right, Mark Anthony K plays a loose ball to Akin Boni and TFC lose possession. TFC immediately counter press which shifts their whole midfield to the right. Bradley tries to cut the passing option to Roberta but fails in doing so. After three quick passes, DC United found Click who had acres of space to run into. Benteke and Durkin's position stopped the TFC centre back and left back from stepping up. Click carries the ball into the space before launching a lethal strike to the bottom left corner. DC's third goal also came in transition in which they were able to get past the TFC midfield line easily. In the build-up to the winning goal, Petrata's ball in behind to Akinola is intercepted. DC United exchanged quick passes. Before Nair received the ball in field, he went on to carry and pass it to the left side where DC United created an overload. 
DC were able to create and exploit a 2v1 overload on the edge of the box before before Monaha Jazzy slow cross was converted by Kudi Pietro. DC's first and third goals were a result of poor defensive transitions from TFC, but it was DC's second goal that would have reminded TFC fans of the defensive horrors from last season. There was a 3v2 on the right of TFC's block in the build-up to DC's second goal. Hedges initially hesitates and responded too late to close down Kudi Pietro and Benteke out muscles Rostad just outside the six yard box. Benteke scores a free header from close range to make it 2 2. TFC collapsed in the closing minutes of the game and the defensive problems are still not solved despite adding multiple new players to their back line and even between the sticks. The How pressure is already mounting on Bob Bradley after a disappointing last season and he will be hoping that TFC can avoid a defeat when they travel to Atlanta on Saturday.